The accounts of this period that can be found in ancient historians are largely considered legends in modern science. The Seven Hills of Rome were probably settled by Latins and Sabines from around the 10th century BC. After 600 BC, the area came under the control of the Etruscans, who combined the villages into one city and established a kingdom. The Etruscans were politically organized into city-states. Around 600 BC, 12 of them joined together to form a city league, the 12 Cities League, which was more religiously oriented and rarely active outside. According to myth, the city was founded in 753 BC by the brothers Romulus and Remus. Since the two city founders are said to have come from Alba Longa, the nobles of Rome later traced their origins back to Aeneas, who had been a hero of the Trojans in the Trojan War. The Alba Longa story is probably a conscious attempt to retrospectively link Roman history to the Trojan War, which the Greeks and Romans believed took place around 1180 BC, when 753 BC had already been accepted as the alleged date of the city's founding. Many displaced persons, refugees, and exiles came to the new city. Since most of them were men, there was a shortage of women. To solve this problem, Romulus used a ruse and invited the residents of the neighboring cities to a large fighting game in honor of Neptune. In the middle of the game, the Roman warriors pounced on the barely armed guests and dispersed them. In the process, they seized all the unmarried girls they could get their hands on. The brothers and fathers swore revenge. However, the girls, most of whom were Sabine women, allowed themselves to be persuaded to marry one after the other. When the Sabines later arrived with a strong army and fought a battle with the Romans, the women crowded onto the battlefield and asked for the fight to be stopped because on one side their brothers and fathers would die and on the other their husbands and children. Their pleas were finally successful, Romulus and Titus Tatius, rulers of the Sabines, shook hands. The fighters became brothers, and the Romans and Sabines merged their state under the dual rule of Romulus and Titus Tatius. According to the ancient story, Romulus managed to unite the Palatine and Quirinal settlements into the Populus Romanus Quiritium through his cunning, subsequent battles, and a peace agreement forced by the Sabine women. From then on he and the Sabine king Titus Tatius ruled jointly. After the unification of the two peoples, the Capitolium was built on the original settlement of the Sabines, the hill that was dedicated to the Sabine god of war Quirinus. Here stood the temple of Quirinus, Saturn, who was particularly revered by the Sabine people. After Romulus, six other Roman kings are said to have followed. Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, the last king, was a tyrant, according to the Lucretia myth, who was expelled from Rome in 510 BC. He is said to have later tried to regain power in Rome with Etruscan or Latin help, but was unsuccessful. Arquinius went so far with the murders of nobles and other abuses of his power that the gods decided to show their anger in an omen. As a result, a snake crawled out of a wooden pillar in the royal palace, causing fear and terror among the royal family. This omen even worried Tarquinius. He sent his two sons and his sister's son, Lucius Junius Brutus, to the oracle at Delphi. Tarquinius' sons thought their cousin was narrow-minded. In order to avoid possible attacks from the king, Lucius Junius had deliberately hidden his intelligence behind a number of less intelligent actions, which had earned him the nickname Brutus, Fool. After the three had arrived in Delphi, they first asked the oracle, as instructed by Tarquinius Superbus, about the meaning of the snake omen. Interestingly, the oracle's answer to this point is not recorded in the sources, but added a question of their own, namely who, of them, would take over the rule of Rome after their father's death. The oracle replied that the first to kiss the mother would be the next ruler of Rome. Tarquinius' sons believed that mother meant their biological mother, but Lucius Junius Brutus realized that the oracle had not spoken of the biological mother, but of the common mother of all people, the earth. As they left the oracle, Lucius pretended to stumble out of clumsiness, fell to the ground, and kissed the earth unnoticed. 
The fall of the Tarquinians is said not to have completely ended the monarchy for Rome. The Etruscan king of Clusium, Lars Porcena, conquered Rome shortly after the kings were overthrown, but had to abandon it again in 503 BC. The Roman Republic can best be described as a mixed constitution with aristocratic and certain democratic elements. At the same time, the cultic element played a major role in Roman state life. In 509 BC, the last Roman king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, was expelled and Lucius Tarquinius Collatinus and Lucius Junius Brutus were elected as the first consuls. According to tradition, Brutus was the son of Tarquinia, the sister of King Tarquinius Superbus. After the king had Brutus' brother and other noble citizens murdered, Brutus pretended to be imbecilic so as not to give the king any reason to fear him and therefore have him killed. This earned him the nickname Brutus, Latin for fool, which he accepted without complaint in keeping with his pretense. When King Tarquinius was frightened by an unfavorable omen and sent two of his sons to the Oracle of Delphi to ask about it, Brutus accompanied them. When they arrived at Delphi, Tarquinius' sons asked the oracle to reveal to them which of them would rule in Rome. When they received the answer that this would be the one who was the first to kiss his mother, the Tarquinians believed that this referred to their biological mother. But Brutus realized that the oracle was talking about the common mother of all people, the earth, pretended to fall and kissed her. According to tradition, Sextus, the youngest son of the king, raped Lucretia, the wife of Lucius Tarquinius Calatinus. Lucretia made her husband and Brutus swear to avenge her, and then stabbed herself. Brutus saw the opportunity to overthrow the king. Lucretia's body was carried out of the house to the forum of her hometown of Calatia, Brutus, who had abandoned his alleged foolishness, and cited the people against him, first there and then in Rome with fiery speeches about the arrogance and crimes of the king and his clan. He obtained a decree by which the king lost his power and was banished along with his family. According to legend, Brutus formed the first Roman consul couple in 509 BC together with Calatinus. As a result, the Tarquinians were able to persuade Brutus' sons, Titus and Tiberius, to conspire with them to restore the king's rule. The plot was discovered and Brutus had his sons executed. Brutus himself is said to have fallen later in a duel against Aarons, a son of the exiled king. Current research assumes that the consulship was not introduced until much later, after the king's rule, the highest office was probably the Praetor Maximus. The Republic was probably founded around 475 BC at the earliest, and only achieved its classical form over the next 200 years. In any case, many Romans retrospectively viewed royal rule as tyranny and rejected it accordingly. However, this aversion may have been less pronounced among the general population than among the politically active upper class. In the 5th century BC, the conflict with the Etruscans was clearly the main concern for the Roman city-state. In the middle of the 5th century, the law applicable to Roman citizens was recorded on 12 tablets, following the example of the Greeks. Rome had probably played an important role in the Latium region even before the 6th century BC. After the establishment of the Republic, a policy of expansion began, which initially probably resulted mostly from the military defense against the supposed external threat. According to later tradition, the decisive turning point from defense to expansion was the sacking of the city in 387 BC. After the Dizetaire, which was glorified as a black day, the aim was no longer just to defend, but also to achieve a final victory over the attackers and their subjugation. The Romans, on the other hand, always viewed negotiated peace as only temporary, 